come back and beat the Vikings. So great special teams players on both sides. This is Fred McAfee, however, on the return, and he is buried inside the 15. And making the big play was Lewis Riddick. For the line, Floyd Turner comes in as the third wide receiver. And the give is to McAfee off the left side. He slices forward, short of the first down by about three. And Jingard is the running back. Out of the shotgun and a bad snap. Sends Wayne Wilson inside his five, and the Saints in trouble. Now Metcalf in motion to the right. And a play fake. And the pass is caught by the tight end, Brian Kitchen. And Kitchen gets close to first down yardage. And third and one, and they're going to throw, and the pass is caught. And it's a first down to Vardell, still going down the sideline, and knocked out of bounds inside the 10. A gain of 18 yards to Tommy Vaughn. The football coach is not involved in the popularity contest. Jimmy Spencer and Tyron Leggett are extra backs in a dime defense. Bill Cox with a fade pattern to Jason. He's got it. Touchdown, Brown. Start line, get a touchdown, and lead 7 to nothing now on Stover's conversion. Well, that'll do a lot. Stover kicking off. It's Hughes and McAfee back deep, and it's returnable to Hughes on the four-yard line. And he turns the corner, and Hughes getting up towards midfield and is hit from behind, and a great return. Remember, this is played on grass. Saints in the, of the play, and that's number 29, uh, Eric, uh, Eric Turner. Turner, who uh, comes across, and that may have been what happened. And then it doesn't help to have a... Oh, first and 10 on the 48-yard line. Hobie Brenner lines up to the left side. McAfee and Muster are in the backfield. And here is McAfee trying to turn the corner, and he does. And he picks up about four or five yards before he is hit hard by <laughs> man right now. I'm sitting next to second down and 16. Wade Wilson finds Hobie Brenner, another penalty marker down, and Brenner tackled at the 35-yard line. If it is against them in the first quarter, and this is a fake reverse, Dalton Hilliard with Kennard blocking, and that's going to wind up to be a pretty good second effort by Hilliard. He was trapped behind the line, and he ended up with another first down. And the crowd, not 20-yard line, in motion goes Quinn early. He gets the catch and is wrestled out of bounds by Mustafa. A gain of 10 yards. They've been loyal fans for the Browns for many, many years. Third down and one on the 10. Two tight ends. Irv Smith joins Hobie Brenner. In motion is Quinn early. And Wade Wilson's pass is caught by Eric Martin, and he'll go in for the touchdown. So the Saints come right back after the Browns scored on their first possession. A 10-yard touchdown pass by Wade Wilson. So Eric Martin, who caught a pass last week for the 100th consecutive game, now make it 101. He led his team in receiving, and it's 7-6. to six. And Wade Wilson really standing in under some ferocious pressure from the defensive front of Cleveland. Watch it stand and deliver here. What happens to Eric Martin is the clear-out route up top, and that'll freeze him up underneath. We're seeing uh, the Saints run a lot of those underneath routes and being very successful hooking up there. Morton Anderson with the extra point. So is Eric Martin now with his second touchdown catch of the season, and the game is tied at 7-7. So with 6.53 remaining in the first quarter, we're all tied. See, Morton Anderson kicking off. Eric Metcalf and Leroy Ford are back deep. And it's going to be Metcalf who's playing with that uh, broken right hand and padding on that. And it'll be a touchback. Browns will start from the 20. And uh, you mentioned Irv Smith had a hand. And watch him right here in his tight end position. He's going to seal in everybody there. And it's, uh, I get this chalkboard to work. Well, we'll show you the play. He's that tight end up at the top of your screen. And uh, he is going to block two men in one play. Watch him now take, down, take up the linebacker, turn 82 right there, seal in the inside. And then uh, Martin is outside, free and easy to catch the touchdown pass. We know you know where the tight end lines up, Dan. <laughs> People may think I might, but not that you do. Well, yeah, both, uh, both ends. We'll see <laughs> they're going two tight end a lot of the time in the Saints way. First down on the 20 for the Browns. And on the draw play, here is Metcalf. Can't go anywhere. Making the tackle was Wayne Martin. No gain on the play. 
Metcalf, as we mentioned, coming into the ball game with a fractured right hand. It's actually the back of the hand, swollen. He has a pad on that, but he is, is feeling pain. No question about it, he admitted to us yesterday. Very ginger with that hand, and the pad is so thin that it really doesn't give him a lot of protection. Second down and ten. They bring Carrier close to the line, and again, a play fake. Bill Cox has time going for Carrier, and the pass is incomplete. Actually hit the defender. Vince Buck. Not sure if Buck was facing where the ball was coming from. It bounced off his shoulder, it seemed. Incomplete will bring up third and long. That's like in a schoolyard, I'd say, hit me, hit me with a you know, down and out. Well, he got hit with a down and out. <laughs> Scores coming in, of action beginning early here today. Third down and 10 coming up from the 20-yard line. Bill Belichick was criticized for his conservative play last week. And the crowd, of course, uh, let known their displeasure following that last draw play to Metcalf. Three wide receivers, Rico Smith in for the first time. And here is Bill Cox with his pass. It's caught, and it's complete for a first down to Smith. So Rico Smith with the catch, will get on the play and a gain of 12 yards. You know, one of the things that helps you when you have a big quarterback uh, right now, Todd Pilcock, 6'4", can throw over that oncoming rush. Ronaldo Turnbull, number, number 97 on the rush. Pilcock's right over the top and delivers to Rico. Suave over on the sideline. <laughs> Well, Bill Belichick has a lot of confidence in Todd Philcox. He says, I know we can win with him at quarterback. Smith goes back out. There are two wide receivers, first and 10 at the 33. Short drop and the pass up the middle to the tight end. Kinchin carries a few defenders and gets close to the first down and may have it. As the Browns driving in a 7-7 game with less than five and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter. Now for an update, let's go to our New York studios and break up the break. All right, Dick, in Chicago, the Packers bounce back from an early Bears touchdown. Brett Favre to Sterling Sharp shakes the tackler. 18-yard touchdown makes it a 7-7 tie. Packers and the Bears at Soldier Field. Dick? All right, Greg, your former team, the Bears, starting to make some noise. Yeah, they really are. And, you know, Sterling Sharp, you sort of spin out of that tackle. He's so strong, Dick. And that's one of the things he does. He works in the weight room a great deal. And it helps when you get in a situation like that to have that ball. Second down and one. They did not get the first down. Ron Wolfley is in there, and the give is to Vardell, and he'll have the first down. Tommy Vardell charges toward the 45-yard line in a game of three, making the tackle with Sam Mills and Les Miller. Mills, of course, coming back. He had that staph infection, spent 15 days in the hospital. Lost over 20 pounds. He said he had a good time gaining all that weight back because he says he's just about there. Said he was uh, what, said his favorite food was McDonald's fries. Yeah, he says normally I'm not a fast food guy, but he says uh, stop the every joint. What's he up to? 223. <laughs> hard to believe. First down on the 45 now. Play fake. Back goes Phil Cox, and his pass is caught by Jackson into Saints territory. He was wide open. And Vaughn Johnson, the linebacker, goes back to make the tackle. He had a long way to cover to Johnson and a gain of 23 yards. Michael Jackson found that little hole in between the, the zones, the two levels of the zone. And watching out, because off a of play action, Philcox rolled out right. And Jackson really just kind of settled in there and caught the ball. But Philcox has got a little ding here. Not bad. But watch Jackson in between the two levels of defenders right there makes the catch on the sideline. Then he gets powdered at the end by Vaughn Johnson. Les Miller was the defender who knocked uh, a Brown lineman into Bill Cox. First down, however, on the 33 of the Saints. Here comes the pressure, and the pass is incomplete intended for Leroy Horde. And it was Sam Mills covering on the play, but there was Ronaldo Turnbull with good pressure on Phil Cox. Looks like to line up an uh, offensive tackle and see him staring at you. 6'4 and about 250 pounds out of West Virginia. Talk to him about his Mountaineers. He was hoping for a uh, number one spot in the college football ranks. A lot of people support West Virginia now with their records. There is Turnbull, who is tied for the NFL lead with Anthony Smith of the Raiders for the most sacks this season. Second down and 10 on the 33. Two Packers on that list. Reggie White and Bryce Hawk. Here is Ford off the right side. Not much there, and he breaks the tackle. Saints did not get Ford at first flush, and he picked up eight yards ultimately. 
with Jim Wilkes and Pete Taylor making the tackle. Winding down the three minutes remaining in the first quarter, the Saints at seven and four. Jim Mora trying to see his team bounce back from a, a horrible slump. They dropped four of their last six games. But I think with a win on the road in Minnesota, they may be on their way. And it's interesting the way the Saints seasons always seem to go. They'll win, you know, get out to a quick start and stumble a bit and then pick it up uh, in the stretch run. Third down and two on the 25-yard line of New Orleans. Bill Cox has some time. He's going deep for Rico Smith. He was well covered back there. Jimmy Spencer, the nickel back, was there. So far, the Saints secondary, which has come under some fire, has performed admirably in this first quarter. And the offensive line of Cleveland giving excellent protection to Todd Philcox. He's able to step up in the pocket. He's able to look down field and step up and deliver the football. And Tony Jones over at left tackle doing a sensational job. They're calling him the MVP of this team right now because he's given all the protection to the blind side of the quarterback. Matt Stover will attempt a field goal. He missed one 53 yards out against Atlanta last week. This was a 43-yard attempt by Stover. It's long enough, and the kick is good enough. And the Browns regain the lead 10 to 7. So, AFC Central. Stover kicking off. Back deep will be Hughes and McAfee for the Saints. Good kick, and it'll be McAfee at the goal line. And drag down. 23-yard line by Mike Caldwell. 23-yard return. Well, next Saturday... Boy, they look good. Duke beat Xavier uh, last night. Yeah. They really did. First down on the 24. Dalton Hilliard and Brad Muster make up the backfield, and the handoff is to Hilliard, and he doesn't get much. The middle of that line of the Cleveland Browns, very tough to run on. A couple of road graders in the middle of that defensive line, and that's the reason why. And then you see the sides collapsing on a run play if you're trying to hit up in between the tackles, and you've got the, that kind of strength up there. It's very difficult to run the football. Anthony Pleasant making the tackle. The Browns have allowed only 3.4 yards a rush. That's fourth best in the NFL. We asked Jerry Ball whether or not uh, Michael Dean allowed him to move around a little bit like Michael Dean likes to do. He said, well, yeah, occasionally, but then he jumps off sides when he lets me go. <laughs> Ball and Dean, uh, Michael Dean Perry, really a pretty good friends and a good combination. Here is Hilliard off the left side as the Browns trying to grab for the ball. Clay Matthews trying to get the ball from Hilliard who held on. It was Michael Dean Perry and Matthews after a gain of three yards. And that'll bring up third down and about five. Dick, right at the end of that play, you saw Herb Smith, number 82, uh, tight end for the New Orleans Saints blocking outside. The rookie out of Notre Dame, and, and they really have to get production for that tight end spot. Both from Hobie Brennan as an excellent blocker, as well as Smith. Three wide and four wide receivers, uh, three to the top of your screen, third down and five. Out of the shotgun, it didn't work the last time, and here's a pass, incomplete, overthrown, intended for Dalton Hilliard. And it looked like Wilson wanted to get rid of that in a hurry following the snap. You remember the first time he went into shotgun formation, the snap sailed over his head. And Mike Johnson had excellent coverage on him. He's number 59, the linebacker. You'll see him right over to the right of your screen right now following Dalton Hilliard all the way out man-to-man. -man, and he's step for step with him down the field. Don't forget, uh, Mike was one of those guys that played for Jim Moore in the USFL. And Wade Wilson's going deep for speed, just a little bit shorter, just dropping in. So Tommy Barnhart, who has a little more room this time to get off his kick, and back is Eric Metcalf. We aren't sure whether Metcalf, who's had that injured hand, would be a punt returner, considering his problems. Booming kick by Barnhart, and Metcalf back to his 22, trying to get some running room. He's got the ability, but the sidelines will do him in, and he is out of bounds. A tremendous kick by Tommy Barnhart. 48 yards. It's wild when you watch uh, Metcalf running the football back. It looks like you ever seen somebody run in water, like try to run up the screen? <laughs> That's the way he looks. He's, you know, all the moves, the stalls, the, all the techniques you could ask for in a return game. This is, a, this is in October when he ran one back against the Steelers. 91 yards. And he and Hughes both are excellent return men and tops in the league right now see that little explosion of burst that he's got right at the end that takes him all in for the touchdown. You can't get the ball in Eric Metcalf's hands enough. And there you see where Hughes, what he's done, and Metcalf has returned them this year. First down on the 34 for the Browns. 
Eric is back there with Tommy Bardell. And here is Metcalf off the right side. Gets good blocking. And then it closes down in a short gain on the play of three yards. The crowd would let go with a tremendous cheer moments ago when there was an out that the New England Patriots lead the Pittsburgh Steelers 14 to nothing in the first quarter of their game at Three River Stadium. And let's watch how Eric Metcalf is running with the football. It's getting lead blocking by Tommy Bardell, number 44, and punches it up inside. Uh, Dick, you know, the thing that you always wonder about with a, a broken bone on the top of the hand is that it's not where, that's not where he's going to get the most of that pressure from, just in terms of holding on to the football. But he's playing pretty tough right now. He sure is, and that's the gun ending the first quarter. And the Browns fans have to be pleased. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Browns 10 and the Saints 7. ...who are losing to the Patriots 14 to nothing. There's Jim Bates over there in the sideline with those uh, Polaroids. Second down and seven on the 37-yard line. Phil Cox with time. And the pass is intercepted by Turnbull, I believe. Ronaldo Turnbull with the interception. You know, it's funny, when you talk with Ronaldo Turnbull, you forget to talk to him about the fact that he actually drops into coverage every now and then because he's such an effective rusher. But one of the things that makes him even more valuable is the fact that he can get back and drop into pass coverage. He does an excellent job here picking the ball off. Todd Wilcox should never have thrown that ball. He had no opportunity to complete that pass. It was intended for Metcalf, and uh, that's only going to bring out the Bernie Kosar fans even more here. And you see the play from the... Upstairs. Watch up the top side of your screen, and, and Tom Turnbull has the play all the way. He looks like the receiver on that play. And there you can see <laughs> Rodrigo Turnbull, very slim and trim for a linebacker. He looks like he could play running back at his size. First down, Wade Wilson, and his pass to Hilliard behind him. So Wilson not throwing well, and both quarterbacks struggling at this point. Stevon Moore was defending. And there's Ronaldo on that sideline. And, you know, he really stepped in and, uh, and really played a role for the uh, Saints in terms of replacing Pat Swilling. Pat has been hurt this year uh, with Detroit. But look at the comparison in terms of numbers of sacks, five and a half for Pat, and 12 right now for Ronaldo. Swilling, of course, has been bothered by a high ankle sprain, but Turnbull has had a terrific year. Most of the sacks coming early in the year. His first NFL interception and the first Saint other than a defensive back to pick one off this year. Second down. Wilson under siege, his pass incomplete. He was going for Hobie Brenner as tight end, and Eric Turner was defending. And it'll be third down. And the pattern we're getting here, Dan, is the fact that the defenses have coming up to play big on both sides. And when you look at the, the last few weeks for both of these teams, that's really been the story of the two teams. The, the defense is playing pretty well, and the, the offense is sputtering a bit. And certainly that's what's happened with the Saints. And the one thing that Jim Moore said, as we talked about at the top of the game, they have to avoid turnovers. I really look at that. Uh, Fumbled snap uh, from center on the shotgun is a turnover for the Saints. Vinny Testaverde is uh, starting to throw or warming up. Don't know if there's any significance. On third and ten, Wilson is sacked by Rob Burnett. Tell you, the Browns are doing a terrific job covering the Saint receivers, and Burnett picks up his sack, his six and a half, leading the ball club. I think you mentioned the key there, the coverage on the play, coverage sack here, because Wade Wilson tries to pull up and go to his left. You see Burnett, he just doesn't give up on the play. A little jump there to try to prevent him from throwing the ball, then he gets the, the sack. So the Browns defense holds, and now the Saints will have to kick. Barnhart and Carrier is back deep. So Metcalf will not return this punt anyway, and a good high kick by Barnhart. Fair catch called for by Mark Carrier at about the seven-yard line. Vinny Testaverde is going to come in to quarterback the Cleveland Browns when we return in just a moment. Interception, and boom, he's on the bench. First down on the eight-yard line, and then he's going to have to face a ferocious New Orleans defense. Metcalf goes in motion to the top. And here is Bardell looking for running room. And he doesn't get anything. And no gain on the play. Here is where Vinny Testaverde got hurt in the Pittsburgh Steelers game. And uh, he's going to get uh, squeezed in as a little sandwich here. Kevin Green's the guy that's going to nail him number 91 right there on that throwing shoulder. And that's when it was separated. And uh, the move was made by Bill Belichick to call on Testaverde after Todd Philcox threw this 
terrible interception right into the hands of Ronaldo Turnbull. Under a little bit of pressure, but still, you have to look over it, and it's hard not to see Turnbull at 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and that's when you have to tuck it in and run with it, maybe. Art Modell, the owner of the Browns, had a smile on his face and will have a whistle and a penalty against Cleveland here when uh, Testaverde came in and uh, cheers uh, welcomed Testaverde. Looks like a start offense prior to the snap number 72 I'll tell you one thing this After game this, this is a goal still second they're, down. they're not giving uh, Vinny a, a break here with the field position and then the penalty here in his first appearance in several weeks this is the regressive offense <laughs> Art Modell the owner of the uh, Cleveland Browns uh, here in his booth right next to our, our broadcast booth uh, I'm sure discussing uh, you know the decision to put Vinny in the game David Modell, his son, alongside. Do we have to whisper now? Because we... <laughs> Second down and 14 on the four-yard line. Gene Williams has replaced Houston Hoover at left guard up front for the Browns. There's the pass rushers, Jackson and Turnbull. Here's Leroy Horde gets nothing. And now the crowd... Say it's not Testaverde's fault at this point. It's the up front of line Sam Mills making the tackle and that'll bring up third and long and, and you really have to credit Sam Mills with an excellent play there too Dick you know he just blasted right through he's got excellent speed he's getting his strength back getting his size back and we talked about when he was out so long with that staff infection on his knee and he lost 20 some pounds in all due respect with the crowd not happy with the play calling mm -hmm. Testaverde's in there you don't want him to start to throw no, the ball you don't deep in his own territory exactly after yeah. the bad that's shoulder. right and especially let him warm up a little bit third down and 14 didn't have the turbos to kick in there as he got down the sideline Dick watch here watch the timing on the screen pass this is what's important watch Testaverde on the timing letting that rush come up in his face then dumping the ball off nice blocking out front Steve Everett 61 that rookie takes his man about five yards downfield and then Horde does the rest of his that sideline but as I said he just doesn't have those boots as Vince Buck knocks him out Testaverde very nearly got knocked back. He was on his back foot in the back of the end zone, but he got the ball off to Horde, and great blocking and running by Horde did the rest. And a first down on the 45, and a timeout called by the Browns. So each team has two timeouts remaining in this first half. The play. A slow flash, but a flash nonetheless, and he got the job done. First down on the 45-yard line. Play fake, and Testaverde stepping up. And he flips it. It is an incompleted pass. It is ruled an incompleted pass. Ronaldo Turnbull with a great uh, rush. And Vinny, uh, that's one of those you take it. Yeah, well, he saved the sack. That's, that's right. It was right a little right. shovel pass, really, trying to get it out of fingers. It's tight end number 49. Uh, that's Clarence Williams. And watch here. Vinny steps up, avoids the rush by Turnbull. He almost had number 13 on the season. And then Vinny flicks it out. Williams goes out of the game, and Eric Metcalf goes back in. Browns have had the edge in total yardage. It'll be second down and 10 on the Cleveland 45. The Steelers have scored a touchdown, trailing the Patriots now 14-7. On the draw play, here's Metcalf, and nothing doing. Quick defense, Ricky Jackson was the second man in, and the first one in was Keith Taylor. Right now, let's send you to New York. Greg Gumbel with another update. Greg? All right, Dick, at the Houston Astrodome, the Oilers with a lead, the Falcons threatening the Bobby Bears pass, kicked off by Steve Jackson in the end zone. The Oilers have intercepted the Falcons twice in the end zone and are holding on to a 3-0 lead in the second quarter. Dick and Dan, back to you. Greg, I would think that the Falcons are very lucky. Two interceptions and it's only 3-0. Exactly. And Vinny Testaverde at the controls for the Cleveland Browns. Third down and 14. The Browns are four for five on third down conversion so far in the game. Rico Smith, the third wide receiver. Testaverde, penalty marker down, and the pass is caught by Metcalf. And he will check that carrier into Saints territory to the 40 in a game of 19 yards, but we'll have a holding call oh, yeah. against Tony Jones, the left tackle of the Browns. It was brutal, too. <laughs> you hate it when you can see the guy go down to the ground, you know? That's when you have to let go. Tony 
Jones, who has started 62 games in a row and has had an outstanding career at left tackle. His job is to keep out Ronaldo Turnbull. Not Ren an easy task today. And Ronaldo Turnbull over on the left side of your, the right-hand side of your screen, told us that, uh, you know, he's really a soft setter. And so what he was going to try to do, you see 66 right now in the middle of your screen, takes him down to the ground, said he's a soft setter. So he's going to wait for a while, set him up a little bit, see how he's setting back in, in pass protection, and then try to use his move. So it's third and 24, back to the 31-yard line for the Browns. The birdie sees the protection go down. Still on his feet, and the pass off the hands of Vardell. Tell you, Vinny Testaverde has saved two sack situations by getting rid of the ball. Wayne Martin that time put on the big rush for the Saints, and it's fourth down. The thing about him is he's so big and strong, you know, stick at 6'5 and about 220 pounds or so. He's a tough guy to bring down, and you see here some escapability, and that's something that was missing uh, in the past here from a standpoint of a quarterback to Cleveland, and that's something that he has. Here is Brian Hansen, former Saint, and a fair catch called for by Tyrone Hughes as the penalty marker down. Thirty-six yard kick by Brian Hansen, who was a kicker for the Saints from 1984 to 1988, an eligible receiver. Somebody left a little early. The thing is so hard to time up Dick. A lot of times with special teams is, is the ball was the ball punted yet. You know, you, you're always listening in, but it's hard to hear it sometimes. You know, Dan, what was interesting is that uh, Hanson did not go back deep all that much for the kick. He looked like uh, you know much shorter than the 13 yards they normally go. Back. So a decision that the Saints have to make. Here. Downfield on the kicking team, number 88. The penalty is refused. First down. So the Saints will take a fairly decent field position at the 34-yard line when we come back after that penalty by Brian Kinchin. Two on the left side. Wade Wilson being rushed, and he dumps it off this time to Dalton Hilliard. And Hilliard, with good running, picks up the first down as he gets close to midfield for the Saints. A gain of 25 yards, and Mike Johnson making the tackle. Vinny Testaverde replaced Todd Philcox at quarterback early in the second quarter. Ronaldo Turnbull with his first NFL interception. And Michael Jackson with his seventh TD catch of the year. He leads the AFC. Now the Browns have three players named Johnson, three players named Jones, and three named Williams. <laughs> the Saints have one of each. One player named Johnson, one Jones, and Williams. So you've got to really be alert to find out which one has been involved in the play in this game. First down on the 48 and a fake reverse. Wilson being rushed and his pass penalty marker down is intended for Hilliard and is caught by Dalton Hilliard, but there's a flag on the opposite side of the field. A short pickup of four yards, Mike Johnson on the tackle. And where that flag came from, Dick, I'd say it's either uh, uh, pass interference or uh, there was an offensive lineman downfield. It'll be a holding penalty okay. against the Saints. <laughs> Sorry, what a Well, you were going to say that next. <laughs> I never say holding. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only guy I like to talk over the official when he announces who the holding penalty is on. <laughs> Kobe Brenner, the tight end, picking up on the scores. 14 to 7, the Patriots lead. Buffalo in front of the Raiders, 7 to 3. Saints, of course, interested in what the 49ers do, and of course, they're playing later against the Cincinnati Bengals at Candlestick Park. Jim Dombrowski is now in his left guard, replacing Chris Port. Port, Kennard, and Dombrowski will alternate, and now Port is playing right guard, so Kennard is out of the game. First down and 20 after the penalty on the Saints 38, and the handoff, nowhere does Dalton Hilliard go. He is knocked back by Michael Dean Perry. Michael Dean on that play and a loss of three. And he's starting to get back to that all-pro caliber of play. You see him right in the middle of your screen. Again, that arm-over technique that's so effective for him and avoiding a blocker and then getting it into the backfield and making the stop. And that's just a little uh, bull wrestling there. Michael Dean Perry. Talked about his brother, the Triggs. Yeah, he said he's playing for fairly well right now for uh, Philadelphia. 
Second down and 23 with eight and a half minutes remaining in the first half. That was a little bit too quick. <laughs> Ball and Dean, like a ball and chain as far as the inside rush for the Cleveland Browns, and the Saints have not been able to solve that today. They Here's did that to move the, move the chains, I can tell you that much. <laughs> Number 90, defense, five yards, and that still was, second down. They gave that to Rob Burnett, so they get five of those yards back. Smith, the uh, offensive coordinator alongside Jim Moore. Call with the long hair, Jim, with the short, distinguished gray look. <laughs> Carl could use a little uh, trim. Take it easy. <laughs> Second down and 18. Three wide receivers. Good pressure on Wade Wilson, and down he goes. And that appears to be Jerry Ball, a former Detroit Lion. And that'll be his third quarterback sack of the year and the second sack of the game for the Browns. They're like grub worms in there. They just keep working. You can't find them half the time, but then all of a sudden they pop up and they're on top of your quarterback. That's what Jerry Ball does. You see him there working against Port. Chris Port just pushes them out of the way and makes the tackle. Jerry Ball in his seventh season, the veteran. Cleveland Browns and the New Orleans Saints are waging a terrific defensive battle here in this first half. It'll be third down and 21. And there is the shuffle pass. Flag is down. Another penalty down. And the shuffle pass that time to Dalton Hilliard. Anthony Pleasant was in on the play. Flags flew almost before the play was yeah. run, you know. All right. So Tommy Barnhart is in the kick again, and now Eric Metcalf, who did not return the last punt for the Browns, goes back now to his own 20-yard line. 7.39 remaining in the first half. It's 10-7 in favor of Cleveland. Browns need a win to get back to 500. Saints trail the Niners by one and they're looking for wild card possibilities. Another great kick. Penalty flag again is down. Here is Metcalf. And he is stopped, but there's a penalty marker down at about the line of scrimmage. Joel Smengi made the play on Metcalf. Wade Wilson trying to get that offense going. That was a 49-yard kick. And I think the Browns will want to re-kick after that one if the penalty is against the Saints. Ineligible downfield on the kicking team, number 99, five yards. Repeat fourth down. So Joel Smengi, who made the tackle, no wonder, got down there ahead of people uh, and left too early, so they're going to have to kick it again. It paid for a while. This Smengi <laughs> just came back from a, an injury. He's struggling a little bit this past week out of Western Michigan. He's a mighty Chippewas, right? Uh, I don't you think so. <laughs> I know. All I know is the Anteaters. <laughs> Interesting that Metcalf, after that return, not much of one goes to the sidelines, and Mark Carrier goes back for the second time. 10-7 to, to score. We have not had any scoring thus far in the second quarter. Field goal by Matt Stover from 43 yards out has been the difference. There's Metcalf, who is shaking that injured right hand. Barnhart back again. This is a shorter kick, and Carrier's going to have a chance to return this one. And he fires cross field. And running up the field now is Eric Turner. And a little razzle-dazzle by the Cleveland Browns. Doesn't get him many yards, but it wowed the crowd somewhat to have been down on Bill Belichick's conservative style offensively. Carrier with a nice pass there. Complete to Turner. <laughs> And Turner's down. <laughs> Plays, but basically, like anywhere else, the fans want the team to win, and if they win, that can turn them around. That's always the bottom line. They you can forget quick when you start winning, Dick. First and ten on the 29. Bardell and Wolfley in the backfield. Testaverde to throw, and he swings it out to Wolfley incomplete. Pass 
with a missed two wide. Ricky Jackson was depending on the flanks. The true test for Vinny Testaverde is when he has to drill a pass in maybe over the middle or into tight coverage. And that's when you'll really know whether or not uh, that arm is more than the 80 to 85 percent that he says it is uh, or it's less than that. You know, in talking with uh, Bill Belichick yesterday, talking about Todd Philcox, he says, we know we can win with him. Mm -hmm. He made one really bad pass that was intercepted. Now they've gone to a guy who obviously is not 100 percent, who can't throw deep. He admits that. Second down and 10. Two tight ends. Leroy Hurd is the running back, and it's Ford, I should say, who gets the call and goes nowhere. He gets the Hurd after. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Leroy Ford gets hit by the Hurd, and it was Les Miller and Sam Mills on that play. And the Saints defense, uh, you know, you really have to like what they do uh, inside with the linebackers always active. You know you're going to have to be on every block uh, if you're going to be successful against these guys. And look at the uh, average yards per rush. Uh, New Orleans, 3.5. Cleveland, yeah. less than a yard. Yeah, even 3.5, pretty impressive. 0.9 is uh, amazing. And both teams have stuffed the run today. Third down and seven. Browns on their 32. They go with three wide receivers. Testaverde's pass to Jackson, and it's caught, and that's going to be enough for the first down. Michael Jackson, and that's going to do a world of confidence for Benny Testaverde, a gain of eight with Turnbull making this tackle. That was the key pass there, the out pattern across his body. He came on real strong. Ricky Jackson on the pass rush. Kenshin, Brian Kitchen says, I don't think so. I'm going to keep you out. Oh, well, LSU Tigers doing a pretty good job of pass protection, and now watch Benny Testaverde on the out pattern. Nice, strong football there. And it was Jimmy Spencer who was defending, so it'll be first down on the 40-yard line with 5.49, just under six minutes to go in the half. Here's a quick toss to Jackson, and right there was Vince Buck. The pass is caught for a couple of yards, give him four yards, but... Uh, you know, it, it took forever for that ball to get to Michael Jackson. Well, a couple of things, though. If you're Tester Birdie now, you know, you want to keep the, the shoulder warm. Uh, you know, you stay in rhythm now. He's throwing pretty well in rhythm. The Vince Buck coming up on the coverage, closing very quickly on the play. But that ball is delivered there in, uh, in short order. Jackson has completed four for, or caught four for 42 yards. Second down and five at the 45-yard line. to Leroy Hoard, and he'll have the first down. Great straight-ahead running by the veteran Leroy Hoard, as we mentioned, born and raised in New Orleans. Vaughn Johnson and Ronaldo Turnbull on the tackle. Gain of nine. St. Augustine uh, High School in uh, New Orleans is where Leroy Hoard uh, attended high school. And uh, credit the uh, interior of that offensive line uh, right now for Cleveland. Steve Everett at center, Bob Dahl, and uh, Gene Williams has moved into one of the guard positions that flip-flopping a few folks in the middle of that offensive line to try to become more effective. Hoard has uh, been a very valuable all-purpose back for the Browns the last four years. So a first down in St. Territory at the 46-yard line of New Orleans. Here's Testaverde, and his pass is overthrown, intended for Rico Smith, and covering was Jimmy Spencer, the nickelback. And uh, nice coverage inside out. Uh, Gene Atkins was also over there coming from his safety position to get out there and uh, give a little detail. Steelers coming back some more against the Patriots. Gary Anderson with a field goal. It's 14 to 10 now in favor of New England in the latter stages of the first half. Second down and 10 at the 46-yard line. The defenses have been the story on both sides of this game. The Browns in front 10 to 7 over the Saints. 4-14 remaining in the half. try to establish something up the middle and a gain of two yards and Vince Buck making the tackle. And as we're going to show you the uh, standings of the AFC Central, you see things uh, tightening up a little bit. If Cleveland can win, get a win today, then well, they could tighten things up with Pittsburgh. And Houston has played, uh, you know, the middle of their schedule, Dick, was a little bit easier than the beginning was, and, and they kind of slipped up on some folks. But uh, I think the, uh, the latter part of the season is going to be a very difficult one for them. Browns, of course, need this win. Make no mistake about it. They'll be the first to tell you this is a must game. They still have Houston on the road next week and Pittsburgh on the road before the season is history. Third down and eight now. Penalty flag now. 
Monteverdi. Pass is out of bounds. Carrier was covered downfield by Ronaldo Turnbull. I'll tell you, we're seeing the likes of Vaughn Johnson and Ronaldo Turnbull going deep downfield in pass coverage for the Saints today. Well, Ronaldo Turnbull's really uh, turned up uh, his, his play this year, Dick. Uh, uh, he's showing you a lot of facets of his game, uh, the ability to stay with wide receivers down the field, step for step, uh, and great explosive speed downfield. And we had an offensive lineman downfield, I believe. Gene Williams was not lined up on the line of scrimmage. The penalty is declined, and it's a punting situation for the Browns. So Brian Hansen will come in and kick, and the dangerous Tyrone Hughes goes back deep for New Orleans. Hughes with a 74-yard punt return is the longest in the league this year. Good kick by Hansen. And the Browns will try to keep it in the field, and it goes into the end zone. They had a man there. Randy Baldwin was standing on the goal line, but the ball got by him, and the Saints will get it out on the 20-yard line. They get a break there. And this is where you hope that that ball pops up in the air so you can get down and, and maybe try to rebound it out. But that one just took a hard bounce, and, and Baldwin really didn't have a chance at it. I want to remind you, coming up at halftime, Greg, 100 meter speed skating world record performance yesterday in Norway. We out of West Dallas, Wisconsin. First down, Brad Muster carries and gets about a yard. Yes, he is. And Jansen uh, trying to get a, an Olympic medal, something that is eluding him. Well, you'll be doing speed skating at the Olympics, won't you? Dick, you'll be doing that speed skating at the yes, Olympics. Yes, I will. I'll be there with Eric Hyden. Mm -hmm. That'll be a lot of fun. I went up and did a story the last Olympics. Uh, on uh, Dan Jansen and his uh, folks up in West Dallas. And what a story that was. It was kind of a sad time, as you well know, because, uh, uh, you know, he slipped and fell. And, and all fell. the bad breaks. Yeah. Death of his sister. Second down and nine on the 21. Saints trying to get at least in the field goal range, and the handoff is to McAfee, breaks something off the right side. And Fred McAfee has a first down for the New Orleans Saints after picking up 12. Clay Matthews, the linebacker on the tackle. You know, it seems like at times as you watch the Saints uh, offensively, they seem to fall into uh, uh, you know, this almost like this atmosphere where kind of casual, you know, uh, without a sense of urgency. And that's something that if I'm uh, if I'm Jim Moore on that side, I'm kind of concerned about that. You like to see that aggressiveness going out, just punching the ball out. And then they seem to, you know, just take it easy sometimes when they should. That's a good point. And sometimes that uh, lethargic state spills over. Final play before the two-minute warning. Irv Smith, the tight end. And the pass is caught, and with 1.58 on the clock, our two-minute warning here at Cleveland Stadium. The Browns still lead by that field goal. A half of their 41 sacks to lead the NFL, but today the New Orleans Saints do not have a quarterback sack. Two timeouts remaining for both sides, second down and eight at the 35. Wilson trips going back, and up the middle, the pass to Quinn Early. And the pass is caught, shy of the first down by a couple of yards. Terry Taylor on the stop. You know that last shot that we had of uh, Ricky Jackson over in the sideline kind of reminds you the fact that you have two dinosaurs really playing a linebacker in this game and play Matthews to Cleveland and Ricky over there for the Saints. And these guys have done great jobs throughout their careers. That's 13, 14 year for Ricky and 16 for play. It's a long time to play linebacker in this league. Wade Wilson is 7 for 10, including a touchdown. Third down and two, big pressure and the pass incomplete. And the Browns again with great pressure inside. One of the men coming in was Mike Johnson and Rob Burnett was the other. So the Browns have got great penetration on Wade Wilson today. A good rush by Burnett who leads the team in sacks. Johnson the 59 right in Wade Wilson's face that made him uh, readjust the, the line of the, the path, of, uh, the, the ball, if you will. And uh, as a result, he could not complete it. Barnhart will kick, and Eric Metcalf goes back for the Browns. There's been a total of only 61 yards rushing in this game. 41 by New Orleans, 20 by Cleveland. And the ball will bounce out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. And so with 1.14 to go, the Browns, who have two timeouts themselves, leading by three. Next Saturday on CBS Sports, the NFL on CBS will continue. First, it's going to be Michigan against Duke. Calvin Hill is working for the Baltimore Orioles. Still, yes, he is. Calvin Hill works for the uh, baseball club. 
First and ten on the 19 for the Browns. Leroy Horde has been the most effective runner for either side. Gets the call on first down, goes up the middle, nothing doing, and he was knocked back by James Williams. And James Williams uh, along with Les Miller. The names, you know, you got Williams in there, you, know, you have Les Miller, he used to be called Big Country when he was out with San Diego, and you got Big Dog. That's the way a defensive line's supposed to be named. You know? Yeah, not Robert. No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah, yeah, you got Big Robert. Country and, and uh, Big Dog. Second down and seven at the 22. Safety blitz coming in on Testaverde, and he has to get rid of it in a hurry. Vince Buck came charging in on the quarterback, and that'll bring up third down. One of the things that uh, the Saints always like to do is bring their safeties every now and then and just kind of change things up. Vince Buck this time on the pressure on Benny Testaverde. Testaverde has completed only three of nine for 54 yards. He came in early in the second quarter for Todd Philcox, who threw an interception. And Bill Belichick uh, gave him the hook. Third and seven on the 22-yard line. Three wide receivers for Cleveland. And here comes the inside blitz, and Testaverde drops. And a delay of game penalty may be uh, upcoming against the Browns as the clock might have run down. Offense, five the, yards, still third down. The Browns have run the play clock down to a couple of seconds on numerous plays in this half. And that's usually a sign that uh, there's a little bit of uh, delay coming from upstairs to Ozzie Newsom on the sideline. He signals it in. He says he's the guy that has you know, the last word in terms of sending a, a play in. He's the last guy to, to, to touch it, if you will, before it gets to the quarterback. The assistant uh, to the head coach here at Cleveland, an offensive coordinator. One of the legends who have played. Oh, he was a great tight end. Yep. Absolutely sensational. A Hall of Fame type tight end. 39 seconds remain in the half. Each team still with two timeouts remaining. Third down and 12. Three-man defensive front and the give. Penalty marker down Leroy Ward again. Well, and now the Saints want to call a timeout in a hurry. There's a penalty marker down that stopped the clock. I don't think they have any more flags in their pockets. No. I saw it come from what? every direction. <laughs> and, and coming in, in, in waves, too. Penalty against the Browns will be declined. Now Jim Morris says, no, we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Easy for them to say, right? First he said no, then he said yes. We'll take it. <laughs> take it. <laughs> Holding, 88 offense, half the distance, still third down. Brian Kinchin holding, so instead of declining the penalty, and here's Jim Morris saying, I know they yeah. get another play out of right. it. But he's thinking half the distance. He thought that probably he's going to get the full 10 and really back him up, but this doesn't back him up as much as he first thought. 34 seconds on the clock. 10-7, to 7, the Browns lead. All the scoring coming in the first quarter today. Michael Jackson on an eight-yard catch from Todd Philcox, and then Eric Martin caught one from Wade Wilson. And then Matt Stover's field goal from 43 yards out has been the difference in the game. Third down and 20, the ball is at the nine-yard line. They spread the defense. They're not going to try anything fancy. Here's the pitch to Leroy Ward. And he is tackled at the 10-yard line by Vince Buck. And with 27 seconds left, the Saints will call a timeout, leaving them with one. And they should get the ball in good field position when we come back. You know, one thing we noticed here, not only do they announce uh, who commits the holding penalty, they put the name on the scoreboard. Oh, that's brutal. Well, you, that's you're, you're brutal. lucky you didn't play here. <laughs> oh, man. You're lucky you never played here. Yeah. Be well remembered, I can oh. tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, all, those story, all those numbers and names and everything, they'll put the guy who made the, committed the penalty up there. I said well remembered, not necessarily oh, part of the yeah. <laughs> So the Saints, with one timeout remaining, 27 seconds, not a lot of time to try to get themselves in field goal range. And a great kick by Hanson. And here is Hughes to the 45-yard line, and that's all. That's 
excellent coverage on the play by the special team, uh, play coverage team of the Browns. And the forward progress will be the 45 of Cleveland following that 41-yard kick. Frank Stams making the tackle on Hughes. Coming up at halftime, Greg and Terry scores and highlights and sports news from uh, the winter of Wonderland. The Olympics coming up in Norway. You'll see it on CBS. Right here, we have 15 seconds left to see what the Saints try to do. They still have one timeout left to try to get Morton Anderson on the field. Four wide receivers line up. They need about 12 yards for Morton Anderson to have a decent shot. Low snap on the shotgun. Wade Wilson's pass, low, intended for Quinn Early. And covering was Najee Mustafa. Now, the, the point may be moot, but at some point or another, you're going to look at the middle of that field, Dick, and, and if you're trying to kick a field goal, and then look how, uh, as you go down the field, you know, it, it lightens up, and that's because uh, that's the area, the infield here at Cleveland Stadium, and that may be a problem if you're thinking about Morton Anderson trying to kick a long field goal. Keep in mind, in case you're wondering, Morton Anderson has had good success on grass. He's not just an inside dome kicker. And an artificial turf kick. Second down and ten. Time is beginning to run out. And the pass incomplete. Intended again for Turner. And he was covered down there by Randy Hilliard, the extra back. Oh, boy, was he covered. This guy's uh, originally from down in Louisiana. He just made a great play there. Watch him tip the ball right at the end of the play. Sticks his arm up. Bing! Knocks that ball out of there right there. And that was just a beautiful play. Uh, for a defensive back. Seven seconds to go. They're going to have to get the play off in a hurry and immediately call timeout to have any chance of trying a tying field goal here in the half. They don't have a lot of time to play with back there. Third down and ten on the 45 of the ground. And here's the inside handoff to Dalton Hilliard. Hilliard running and he is tackled as time runs out in the half. They just didn't have enough time to the Saints to get the ball in position for Morton Anderson. And time has run out. Mike Johnson makes the tackle. And that'll do it for the first half of action. That is the end of the first half here at Cleveland Stadium with the score. The Browns 10 and the Saints 7. Well, the Browns, uh, who came into the game with 39 sacks allowed, second most in the NFL behind Cincinnati, have kept the enemy away so far today. Underway for the second half kickoff, Eric Metcalf returns for the Browns. Playing with that uh, injured right hand is down at about the 22-yard line. So Testaverde and company will go to work here after a 21-yard return. Patrick Newman made the stop on Metcalf. Browns have not been able to run the ball much. And let's see uh, if they start off in that fashion. They have uh, Bar Tommy Bardell and Leroy Horde. Horde was the most effective with 22 yards gained in the first half. And just to reset the story for Vinny Testaverde told us yesterday as he was getting treatment in the uh, medical room uh, and here uh, with the Cleveland Browns, he said he's about 80 to 85 percent with that shoulder that he injured back on October 24. Hasn't thrown anything deep yet. First play, play action. Testaverde on the run in his pass. Incomplete intended for Todd Kinchin. We'll bring up second and ten. Ricky Jackson was covering the tight end. And again, he's trying to squeeze one in on the sideline, and it does not look like a great pass to start out with, but uh, watch Kinchin here. He tries to sell the, the run to the opposite side, but really, that's nice coverage on the play. And if you look in front, Rick, Ricky Jackson is there step for step with him. Testaverde is now three for ten for 54 yards. He said the problem with the long pass, the touch on the long pass. Just locking it in there and just, you know, just feathering it. Ball is on the 23 at Cleveland. Leroy Horde. Now the setback. Testaverde flips it out to Horde. Makes a one-handed grab of it. Fumbles the ball, picked up by the Saints. And New Orleans with Vince Buck gets the turnover. And a big one, that is the... Second time that the Browns have turned the ball over in this game and will give the Saints great field position here. You got to know where you are and, and understand the circumstances and hold on to the football. And Tester Bernie delivers this ball in pretty good shape. And Leroy trying to make a couple of moves, holds the ball a little casually and gets slammed from inside. Uh, and that was by number 91, uh, Robert Pick Goff, who's had to make the play, forces the bucket. 
So let's see if the Saints can take advantage of the turnover. It'll be a first down on the 20-yard line of the Browns. Skies at Brighton, but not the Browns' fortunes at this point. And the first play is a handoff to McAfee, trying to test the right side, and he runs right into Eric Turner, the free safety, and a gain of only two yards. And uh, for both of these teams, turnovers have been the story for the last couple of weeks, and whether or not you're successful. And uh, so far in this game, uh, two for Cleveland and zero for New Orleans. I'll say a half a turnover because of that snap the ball over the head of Wade Wilson. Now, if you turn the ball over twice, as the Browns have done, you have a 48% chance of winning. That's this year's games. Three or more, 22%. So it really drops down in a hurry. And according to Jim Moore, that's the name of the game. More than that, you get fired. <laughs> Second down and eight, two tight ends for the Saints operating out of the I formation. And they give it to McAfee up the middle. Nothing there. I tell you, the Browns have been tremendous in stopping the inside run. That means Jerry Ball and a gain of only three. You know, I would try to run a little bit uh, out behind my tackles. Uh, maybe uh, Will Roth, the, uh, the youngster. I might try to go behind him and see what he can do against this Cleveland defense. Because right now, if you're running up inside on this defense, you're running into trouble. Number 93, Jerry Ball there, conservatively at uh, 315 and playing exceptionally well. Well, they tried on first down and with McAfee, and they didn't have anything there. So uh, running is just tough against the Browns thus far. Third down and five on the 15-yard line of Cleveland. The Saints at least are in field goal range. Wade Wilson is sacked. Back to the 25. Rob Burnett with his second sack of the game. Now with seven and a half on the year. And the Saints are still in field goal range, but uh, not an easy chip shot and a loss of nine. Now watch right here. If we could freeze it right there. Uh, now, we'll see, you see Burnett, number 90, came off the heart, off the shoulder of, of Kennard, Derek Kennard, and just worked right in. He worked into Will Rolfe, pushed him off to the side, and beat Kennard on the corner. It'll be a 41-yard field goal attempt for Martin Anderson, who has had four game-winning field goals this year. Holding is Tommy Barnhart, and the kick is perfect. And the game is tied again. So Morton Anderson with a 41-yarder capitalizing on the fumble by Hoard. And the Saints have tied the game early in the third quarter. Have been rising uh, steadily and maybe close to the 50-degree mark. Wait, hold on. You're going to have us in tropical weather before long. It's we'll still be up pretty at 85 yeah, by yeah. the time this game is over. <laughs> You'll shed that sweater and that coat. Kick headed over toward Metcalf, a yard in the end zone. He's got great speed as Metcalf, but runs into a crowd and is down at the 23-yard line by Joel Smingy. Uh, the look back at that last play and what happened. Will Rolf uh, is the offensive tackle in question. Watch here as Burnett's right there. Now, they're going to run a twist. And you say, what's a twist? Well, you see Rolf looking outside his man. Now, Burnett finds himself in the gap between the guard tackle and Rolf's man inside spins out. And as a result, uh, Burnett slips in and gets the sack. Just works off the corner. Put himself in an excellent position to make a big play. All the sacks have been owned by the Browns today, and they have all three of them. That's somewhat of a surprise. First down on the 23-yard line for the Browns. 10-10 the score. Tommy Bardell slips as he crosses the 25-yard line. The game is three. Les Miller, the nose tackle. The Bears leading the Packers 17 to 10. They're going to play well as the season uh, moves towards its conclusion. I think I talked to both coaching staffs about the condition of the field today because that's always a concern when you're playing in weather and every uh, yesterday it rained. And, uh, yeah, oh yeah, I <laughs> talked to a lot of people. Uh, you know, they have the field covered, but it's still you know kind of damp. And really, right down the middle of the field is the area of a lot of concern in terms of trying to get your cleats in and really get a grip on it. So we're going to you know, have some favorable weather conditions uh, going down the stretch. Second down and seven for Vinny Testaverde on the 26-yard line. Tight end pinching in motion, and Bardell tries to scrap for a few yards. We saw Les Miller trying to grab the ball away from Bardell to no avail, and a gain of four yards will present a third down as Ford and the third wide receiver Rico Smith enter the game. 
There's uh, Steve Everett in the middle of things again. He told us about the relationship that he had with uh, Jay Hilgenberg before Jay left and uh, went down to uh, New Orleans. He said he really helped him out a great deal in his in his first season. I like the way you said New Orleans. In New Orleans. Oh, we got an official thing up over in the sideline. Doc looks like he's asked him how many fingers. There are none. Bob Moore, the back judge on the sideline. So third down and three. Pressure on Testaverde. Screen pass to Horde. He turns on the Jets as a first down. And upended by Gene Atkins. So a big play. Leroy Horde and Ronaldo Turnbull putting great pressure on Vinny Testaverde. But again, he got rid of the ball just in the nick of time. Ronaldo just a split second too late uh, to make the sack. Watch him here from the right side of your screen. Number 97 on the pressure on Benny Testaverde. Testaverde can't see him, but boy, he delivered that football off the nice. And that's a play where ordinarily the quarterback, if you had a shoulder problem, doesn't help. Watch Testaverde avoiding the rush oncoming, but he could not see Ronaldo Turnbull coming from behind. 14-yard gain and a first down for the Browns on their 45. So Horde has figured it two of the bigger plays of the game. Hand off to Bardell, gets stripped up, trying to check the middle of the Saints line. New Orleans has come up empty, going against Cleveland running up the middle, a gain of two. Sam Mills and Ronaldo Turnbull on the play. You know, one of the interesting things about uh, Cleveland Stadium today, Dick, is it's been relatively quiet. This place has always been known as a place where, you know, the fans are uh, making a lot of noise and really into the ball game. It's, it's almost been like uh, they've been at the opera today. Second down, and well, they're not used to the weather here. They expect it to be real cold. But they're not sunbathing, are they? <laughs> Audible call by Testaverde at the line. Metcalf went in motion. Vinny gets pressure. Long pass, and it's intercepted. And that's Gene Atkins. Atkins still on his feet, and now hit. A Defensive back looked like he was shaking up Toy Cook, slow getting up, but he appears to be all right. And another turnover, that will be the third of the ball game committed by the Cleveland Browns. And we talked about one of the problems Benny Testaverde told us he had, and that is feathering the ball in downfield. And this is one where he's trying to Mike, uh, he's trying to go to Michael Jackson and could not get the football there, and Gene Atkins comes up with the pick. Back judge, who uh, is on the bench, Dean Kleinschmidt, the uh, outstanding trainer for the New Orleans Saints working with him. Meanwhile, first down on the 38-yard line for the Saints following the interception by Gene Atkins. Handoff is to Dalton Hilliard. Gets stopped once at the line of scrimmage, breaks the tackle, and Hilliard carries out to the 45-yard line. A gain of seven before Stevon Moore, the strong safety, makes the play. So the Browns have turned it over three times, and... Uh, the uh, Saints have capitalized once, and this one is in progress. And that's the thing that you always go back to, is how many points do you, you know, create off the turnovers? And uh, so far, uh, that's been a one of the stories for New Orleans, is that they have not done that on previous occasions in the last six weeks, at least. Second down and three. Saints on their 45. Again, a running play. A failure trying to test the outside. But the Browns are there, close to the first down. They've got it. Steve on Moore again, but it should be enough for uh, Saints first down. So when you turn the ball over three or more times, your chances of winning go down to 22 percent, according to our uh, geniuses of the computer. Boy, yeah, I tell you, hey, get, get a couple of less RAM and a couple of less bars. <laughs> How would you like to have that job to figure out the percentage of every team? Ooh, would you right. like that, Dan? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, <laughs> you're off the hook. First down at midfield. Billiard has been the workhorse today. Three wide receivers, including Turner, and here is Hilliard trapped. Nowhere to go, and he's going to get thrown for a loss. And back inside the 40-yard line. Flag is on the play, and the flag really fell before the play the ball is snapped. Well, they would have stopped the play immediately and whistled it down and had it been against the Saints. Illegal formation on the offense. Number 77 was not lined up for the line of scrimmage. The penalty is refused. Second down. That's unusual that they would uh, let that play go on. Well, and that's a weak call, too. I mean, what, what happens is uh, the tackles try to get a little bit of breathing room between themselves and the defensive end, and uh, they're going to flag over off the rookie. A fine, outstanding tackle uh, for the Saints for that one. Uh, I'm sorry. I just don't agree with those calls because I know how tough it is to play out there in that corner. You know you've been there. 
Second down and 20 now. Back to the 40-yard line. Wade Wilson on a design rollout gets some pressure. Dalton Hilliard on the catch, but he is wrestled out immediately by Mike Caldwell. Dalton Hilliard has touched the ball on every play, I think, on this series so far for New Orleans. And if I'm them, I like to get the ball in his hand. He's very active, uh, gets upfield, makes a couple of moves, a couple of making misses, and then he's gone. The most uh, action he uh, performed in was against the Phoenix Cardinals. He caught five passes in that game, and uh, Hilliard, the once a 1,000 yard rusher, keep in mind, now has been relegated to uh, third down duties. And you know, when they lost Lorenzo Neal in their backfield, they really lost their power runner. You know, a guy that could really just make you pay the price. But uh, I like the fact that uh, Dog got that good look now with the blood on the jersey. They've lost that time. Here's Wade Wilson. Down inside his 30-yard line by Anthony Pleasant. So that is the fourth sack of the game by the Cleveland Browns. And a big loss on the play, that time of 13 yards. And... Here it is. And just to show you that Pleasant's uh, state of mind, his uh, Pleasant making the rush and getting to the quarterback. He's beating Hobie Brennan, the tight end. But usually have a tight end blocking that much on pass protection, particularly when the quarterback tries to come out to that side. Very difficult for uh, a tight end to do. Anthony Pleasant with the sack. Eric Metcalf is back deep, and Tommy Barnhart will kick. Browns peel back for the return. Metcalf to let it down to the 25 and it takes the St. Roll inside or right about the 15 yard line. So Tommy Barnhart doing a brilliant job today. That was a 56 yard kick. For releasing Bernie Kozar. He did it at a time when Benny Testaverde was hurt and Todd Philcox was the best quarterback on hand. And they were leading the division. Uh -huh. at the time. Five and two. First down on the 15 yard line. Testaverde with a deep drop. Swing pass to Metcalf. And he dropped inside the 10-yard line. Loss of five, Toy Cook with good penetration. Excellent defensive play by Toy Cook over on the far side of the field. You know, yesterday, Bill Belichick, you asked him, how many times did you look at the replay do you want to see Eric Metcalf handle the ball? He said 15 times. Yeah. He, didn't go, he didn't hesitate. And right now, he has handled the ball counting kick returns seven times. And, uh, and when I asked him uh, that question, I asked uh, Metcalf that question, he just smiled. <laughs> I said 20, 25. He's like, keep going, keep going. Cook after a fine play, shadowing Metcalf. It'll be second down and 15. Ball back at the ground 10. With 5.55 to go in the third. Pressure, safety blitz. Testaverde pass is caught. And Michael Jackson, who caught the touchdown pass on the Browns first possession, grabs this one. And a gain of 17 yards, and Troy Cook was defending. Thanks, Fire and Vince Buck once again trying to get in on the backside of the play and get the sack. And uh, this time, Tessa Verde, too quick with it, watching him just snap this one out of there. And he really seems to be falling into a nice little rhythm here and starting to connect up, hook up with some of his receivers downfield. The ball, no question, he, he has the strength now in that arm to, to really swing it. First down on the 28-yard line for the Browns. Tied at 10-10. Here is Metcalf getting a quick opener up the middle. Cuts to the outside and a foot race. And boy, he got a late bent back on that play. Uh, Vince Buck holding him down at the last second. That was a 55-yard run, the longest run from scrimmage for the Browns this year. That certainly wakes the crowd up. And watch this blocking up inside. Excellent blocking by the offensive line. Metcalf with a sensational run. You see him here. Here's the sideline. Vince Buck is the only guy between him and the end zone. Buck does a nice job of staying with the play and pulling him down from behind. And a first down on the 17-yard line of the Browns. Leroy Horde giving Metcalf a breather. And it's going to be Horde up the middle. And he's got a first down inside the Saints' five. Gain of 13 for Horde, and the Browns be less than five yards to take the lead again in this game. And uh, we mentioned before that offensively, the Saints show kind of was at malaise, if you will, and now you're paying for it because uh, suddenly Cleveland jumps out and bites you, get down and scores, and Leroy Horde, nice block, and up front, and boy, he just punishes a couple of defensive backs. It'll be a first and goal on the New Orleans four-yard line.
Estaverde looking up the middle. Get down that goal line. A lot of teams want to play a little zone, make you throw through the thick and fence. Well, Tessa Verde here uh, sees his receiver, Michael Jackson, coming across a uh, flat in the end zone. Taylor, Keith Taylor was one guy trying to step up, and he's been chased by Sam Mills from a linebacking position. That's tough to do when you have that receiver on a crossing pattern. And here is Matt Stover, and he makes it 17 to 10 in favor of the Browns. They started this drive down by the chalk pound, and that must have inspired them as they take a touchdown lead over the Saints. Late in the third quarter, the Steelers are in front of the Patriots 17-14 after trailing 14-0 in that game. So the Browns in front 17-10, 68 yards rushing on the last drive, 55 by Eric Metcalf on that one brilliant run for the Saints. And he tries to hand off to Hughes. And they very nearly caused a critical fumble. Gerald Dixon was right there to make the play. And right now for an update on the Atlanta-Houston game, let's check in with Greg in New York. All right, Dick, you mentioned the lead. Here's how it happened. Bobby Abair from six yards out to Andre Risen. It stretches the Falcons' lead now to 14-6 to over the Houston Oilers in the third. Dick and Dan, back to you. And this place is rocking here with the Browns in front making a big play on the kickoff coverage and a first down on the 12-yard line for Wade Wilson. Wilson's first pass incomplete. Mustafa was covering Quinn Early or Floyd Turner on that play, so that'll bring up second down. Dick, let's go back to that touchdown play. I mentioned that they were playing a lot of zone on the goal line. We'll watch the Saints defense here. Now we'll freeze it right here. You see everybody that's picket fence right along the, the uh, goal line. That's what you're trying to throw to. Now Michael Jackson will be coming uh, right, uh, left to right. And right there he makes a touchdown reception, beating the inside coverage of the linebacker. And there's Michael Jackson, who has now caught eight touchdown passes this year. Second down and ten. This game summary is sponsored by Buck. Wilson steps up, flips it to Hilliard, who can't hold on to it. He had some running room if he had caught it. And he was covered by Caldwell, and that'll bring up third down and ten. Michael Jackson over the sideline, and his numbers for the day, six receptions. Six yards and more importantly, two touchdowns. Beautiful route run on that fade for the touchdown early on. And there's his quarterback, Vinny Testaverde. Third down and ten. Wilson eight for 16 for 62 yards and one touchdown pass. Again operating out of the shotgun. Here comes the blitz by the Browns. Wilson's pass is caught. And it's Torrance Small with his first reception of the game and a big one to get the Saints out of danger. A gain of 14 yards, Terry Taylor made the tackle. Torrance Small, another one of those uh, tall receivers at 6'3". And you, this is what you're seeing more, 6'3 receivers making it difficult. Defensive backs, 83 right there in the crossing battle. Up underneath after the clearing out route, he makes a nice catch there and one that gets him a first down. That quiets the crowd somewhat. First down on the 26 of the Saints with three minutes exactly remaining in the third quarter. On the draw play, Hilliard tries to go outside. And from the play there, that's what he called. They did not call it. He did get hit in the face mask as he gets to the 30-yard line, a gain of four. Jerry Ball on the tackle. And that's exactly what Hilliard is telling the official. Yeah, you, you know it when somebody grabs it. <laughs> it registers. Hilliard has gained 38 yards on nine carries and has been the chief ground gainer for the Saints today. Bill Belichick uh, told us that, you know, the only thing we have to do is win, and a lot of the criticism will go away, and we will find out if that's true today. Second down and six from the 30. Pressure on Wilson, and here is Eric Martin. 
Martin came back for it and is stopped short of the first down by a yard. But I'll tell you, Wayne Wilson, now a late flag is thrown. Stevon Moore made the stop, a gain of five yards. It was Mike Johnson on the blitz for the Browns. When they dropped that long after the play, they're tardy. The five-yard face mask, five yards from the end of the run, still second down. And you know what they are, too? They're late, too, when they, when, when they throw a face mask. That, that's right, as well as part. <laughs> They'll mark off five yards. What's the temperature up to 70 now? Oh, yeah, at least 70. And there's those photos. <laughs> you know, this is interesting, Dick. You know, we used to get Polaroids a long time ago. They actually sent you a real Polaroid uh, shot yeah. upstairs. Well, now they have a machine on the sideline. It's almost like a fax. They roll them out based on the video that's being taken on the well, coach's camera. Color. I mean, why, why, why Well, no, color? see, but even if you watch uh, game tape, a lot of times it's in black and white because it shows the contrast a little bit better. You need color, though, huh? Yeah, I would prefer that. <laughs> First okay. And that's the 40 of the scene. Saints with only 116 yards of total offense today. There's Wade Wilson going deep for Quinn Early. And it was nearly intercepted by Stevon Moore. Bill Belichick told us yesterday that Moore would have to be the guy to curtail Eric Martin. But there he was covering the deep man, Quinn Early. And they like to go to Quinn Early downfield. They also said that Jim Moore said if they're going to go downfield, it will be to Quinn Early. If they're going to throw short, it will be to Eric Martin early there on the go route. And this ball is... Uh, just a half a step away from being a touchdown, maybe, with Quinn Early and that excellent speed downfield. And, and, and a half a step from an interception. That's right, with us. Well, one more. Second down and 10. Wade Wilson, down he goes. I tell you, the offensive front for the Saints provided no resistance against Michael Dean, Perry, and Clay Matthews. None. Absolutely none. Loss of 11 yards on the play. They'll be happy in Cleveland when they know about this story. Here's Greg Gumbel. Thank you, Dick. They will indeed. Uh, Houston, watch the terrific play by Houston quarterback Warren Moon under a heavy rush. Gets it away. 25 yards to Webster Slaughter. The Oilers are within one. 14-13. Falcons in the third, Dick. So Atlanta still leading by a point in that ball game. Well, they're not going to be happy, so... Third down and 21. Pass up the middle of Hilliard, way short. And the Saints will have to kick it away. Mike Johnson on the tackle. And Michael Dean Perry on Wade Wilson once again. They're going to be real familiar by the end of this ball game. Too familiar. Barnhart will come in and kick, and the Metcalf will go back deep for the Browns. He has averaged over 45 yards a kick, including a 56-yarder today. Here's Metcalf on the run, looking to return this. He muffs it. We'll wait for the official signal. He won't go by the athlete. <laughs> they always know. Same signal that they've recovered the uh, muff punt. It is New Orleans ball. And you see, the way the ball came down, it was a tail wagger, and it almost came down the, the opposite of the way you normally expect it to because the tail was spinning up and came right back down to Metcalf, made it tough to, to, to try to feel this one, watch as he steps up, and the, the ball's going to come straight down through his hands. And that's what makes it difficult, right there, trying to make the catch and the cut at the same time. And New Orleans uh, recovers the football. Brad Muster recovered the fumble, so that's the fourth turnover by the Browns. The Saints have been able to capitalize only one time, and that was a field goal that tied the game at 10. Bill Belichick wants a timeout. Confusion on the field, and so the Browns will use up one of their three timeouts. We have three, and today, largely, the Browns have avoided disaster following turnovers, and they've turned it over four times. Went early in motion. Wade Wilson guns it. To Irv Smith, who makes a great catch, the rookie tight end, with a fine catch inside the Browns' 15-yard line. Najee Mustafa making the tackle and a pickup of 19. Irv Smith has got some excellent hands at tight end. And, uh, this is a great throw by Wade Wilson. Really popped it in there nice and saw the coverage on the sideline and just drilled it into him. Coming off his best outing of his rookie year last week with four catches for 45 yards against the Vikings. So first down on the 14. 
and we will not get to play off. They'll go to the other end and have a chance to talk it over. And that is the end of the third quarter here at Cleveland Stadium with the score, the Browns 17 and the Saints 10. Our coverage will continue after this message. Our gotten turnovers four times, have capitalized only once with this drive going. And, and a lot of times where you get the ball when you have the experience of turnover, Dick, you know, the field position and all the rest of it, they have to be more productive off the turnovers than they have been in this ball game. play of the final quarter and here's Hilliard cutting inside they grab his jersey and Hilliard gets close to the five yard line Pepper Johnson and Eric Turner combined on the play and a pickup of seven Dalton Hilliard's running like he's about uh, 19 years old again when you see him pop up through there and make a couple of moves it's, it's real exciting and watch him hit the hole here and he makes a little shake move at right there at the line of scrims a, a shake off of Jerry Ball and heads up inside some power running now and three defenders it takes to bring him down. Dalton Hilliard having a fine day, second down and three at the seven-yard line. This is his most productive day of the season for Dalton Hilliard. Fumble, and Wade Wilson alertly picks it up and covers it up with Anthony Pleasant right over him. You know, on the previous play, Dan, I think there was a miscommunication as well mm -hmm. between Joel Hilgenberg and Wilson just a split second before the handoff to Hilliard. And, he, and luckily for uh, New Orleans there, uh, Wilson stayed with it. And that's not supposed to happen this time of the year. But it's up to 85 degrees here in Cleveland, that's so right. that's why it's unseasonable. It's tropical. <laughs> <laughs> the only kidding fans is about 48. Extra defensive backs, Randy Hilliard and Dell Steer for the Browns. Third down and six. And here's the pressure again. Coming from the inside, Dell Steer, this time on a safety blitz. Wade Wilson had no chance. And that'll bring a fourth down, and the Saints will have to settle for a three-point attempt by Morton Anderson. Take what they always tell you in the offensive line is take the most dangerous guy right up inside. You see 43 right there, Spear coming up inside. Don't worry so much about the guy spinning outside because it takes them longer to get to the quarterback than that guy slicing right through and going right through the middle of the offensive line. This would be a 27-yard attempt, so Spear came in as the extra back and very nearly sacked Wade Wilson. 27-yard attempt. Anderson already has connected on a 41-yard field goal. kick is good, and that brings the Saints to within four, 17 to 13, early here in the final quarter. Here's Morton Anderson, back deep will be Eric Metcalf and Leroy Ward. They want the ball in Metcalf's hands as much as possible, and he'll make it happen here, he'll return to the goal line. Field. Eric Metcalf with a return of 46 yards, and Tyrone Hughes ran him out of bounds. Boy, he is fun to watch. <laughs> Holy mackerel. You know, he's got a running style that's exciting, number one, and then the guy has to explode a lot more of everything. He's going to run over everybody. <laughs> First and 10 on the 46. With 13-34, practically the entire quarter remaining. Testaverde's pass. Rico Smith is pleading with the official. One thing, Dan, it looks as if Tester Verde pushed that ball in. And, 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 you know, uh, as you continue on and the day gets a little bit colder, maybe it's time to start thinking about uh, pulling Phil Cox back in there because if his shoulder stiffens up, then that's certainly something that can be a concern for you later on in the game. Yeah, he pushed that ball yep. on the short pattern underneath to Rico Smith. It'll be second down and ten. <laughs> receivers to line up to the right. And they're going to have an illegal procedure full start. As we mentioned earlier, the Browns have really let that clock run down to one or two seconds in many occasions. They've been called for a delay one time today. Full start, number 12, prior to the snap, five yards, still second That was the quarterback who took the step back before the snap. And a lot of times you get cute and maybe you're trying to draw off the uh, defense and you end up... Uh, uh, goofing up your own uh, offense. Well, uh, the Browns, the last two weeks, have come back after trailing early to lose 
I mean, they've lost four in a row. Today, though, they have been involved and have not lost the lead. They've been in front or tied throughout this game. Second down and 15 now for Cleveland. And on the draw play, Ford, he's not going anywhere. And the first man to grab him was Vince Buck. He was playing right up in the line. Don't take your helmet off, Leroy. It's a dangerous thing to do. It's like going into a heavyweight fight and throwing away your mouthpiece. Don't do it. Always wear your seatbelt and always have your helmet on. Thanks for that seatbelt. You know what? Mm -hmm. A lot of people can be driving home. Oh, yeah. And I'll always put that Good on. Idea. Good idea. Great safety measure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No gain on the play. <laughs> I feel like McGruff now. <laughs> Third down and 15 on the 42-yard line of Cleveland. That's the very pass. Incomplete, nearly intercepted. Threw into a crowd. Michael Jackson, the intended receiver, but there were three defenders, and Jimmy Spencer knocked the ball away. I like to take a look at uh, Tony Jones over that left tackle position. Talked to him earlier in the ballgame about what kind of job he was doing. Watch him at the top of the screen, number 66. Watch him just manhandling with all those turn balls there. That's just strength. Strength on strength, and Tony Jones gets the better of that one. But with all those turn gotten his shots in today as well. Ryan Hanson, he sure has. A fine shake. Tyrone Hughes will let the ball bounce. And it takes the New Orleans hop and is down at about the 27-yard line. Twelve and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Eric Metcalf, has he been in the game today? Look at that jersey and helmet. Panasonic presents a unique and highly evolved. And man jiggets here at Cleveland Stadium. The Saints have a first down on their 27-yard line. They have averaged less than three yards per offensive play today. Only 137 yards in what has been a conservative offensive style for them. Nothing unusual. Now's the time when uh, New Orleans needs a nice solid drive. Uh, by the same token that Cleveland defense, if, if you're going to stop them and get them out of the ball game, this is an opportunity to create a turnover. Or they're working on the referee's mic, and while they do that, let's check in with Greg Humble in New York, Greg. Turn of events in Houston, Dick. Watch the blitz coming on Bobby A. Bear. William Fuller makes the hit. Loose ball in the end zone, recovered by Ray Childress. The extra point makes it a Houston Oilers lead. 20 to 14, last moments of the third quarter. Won't be met uh, with uh, smiles here in Cleveland. No, but they're starting to figure out the Buddy Ryan defense. That's what's happening down in Houston defensively for. It's a complicated field of rounds. One game behind Pittsburgh, two behind Houston. And the dog pound is on their feet now, trying to make it difficult for the Saints offense. Just, just looking at it would make it difficult to do anything. First down, Wade Wilson goes deep. Incomplete, Quinn Early was covered downfield by Terry Taylor. Now today, the Saints' two biggest plays have been a pair of 19-yard completions to their tight ends, Hobie Brenner and Irv Smith. So Wade Wilson has not aired it out much today. And the thought process coming in was maybe they could take advantage of things with three wide receivers and that type of a thing, but it has not proven to be so for the Saints. Bears lead. Vikings lead. And as you know, Houston is in front of Atlanta. Second down and 10. Plenty of time remaining. Here's the handoff to Dalton Hilliard. He's got some blocking, but the Browns converge again. And it was Dell Spears who came into Wade Wilson's face on the last series with another big play, no game. Michael Johnson uh, came on the blitz that time in 59 to Cleveland. Popped right through there and really forced the issue on the play. Watch him coming from the uh, left-hand side of the screen. Right now, he almost gets a handoff for Dalton Hilliard. Hilliard hits the corner, and there's just no room to run up there. Spear and the rest of the secondary come up and collapse on the play. The New Orleans offensive line has really had its hands full against the Cleveland Browns defensive front today. Third down and 10. Jim Dombrowski is the left guard. Out of the shotgun. Wilson's pass. Nearly intercepted. Eric Martin, the intended receiver, and Stevon Moore had it and then lost it as the ball went out of bounds. It's fourth down, and the Browns hold again. Saints receivers not getting any separation between themselves and the defensive backs. As a result, the quarterback's thrown into tight coverage. 
that's not a good situation because normally bad things happen when you try to do that. Barely avoided there when Wilson did a kickoff. Coming in is interception rate, the worst in the NFL. But no turnovers committed by the Saints today. Barnhart will be kicking and Eric Metcalf who has 153 total yards today, is back deep. Last time, he returned one. There he goes again, and he's hemmed in and down immediately at about the 31-yard line by James Williams after a return of seven. Browns have the ball, 11.36 to go. Playoff picture a little bit, and, you know, keep your hopes alive. First down on the 31-yard line for Cleveland. Harrier comes in motion, and here's Bardell. Nothing doing up the middle. Browns, of course, more in de dire straits than the Saints coming into this game, considering a 5-6 and six record. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they were one game behind the second place, Pittsburgh Steelers. The Saints in better position at 7-4, but, you know, a loss here for New Orleans. Right, right. A big, uh, and when we talked with them, they said, hey, you know, we really haven't played well since about the third week of the season. You know, yeah, they won a couple of ball games, but they haven't really popped out like they wanted to, and so that's got to be a concern to you as you look at the tail end of the schedule. And with the Bears winning today, they now become a bigger factor in the playoffs. That's right. right. If they the wild cards and things like that. Second down and eight now, and the play fake, and a good one, Testa Verde has Jackson in the pass is intercepted. Now they throw it incomplete. Vince Buck was there, but he trapped the ball. And it is an incomplete pass. Very nearly the fifth turnover by the Browns. And Michael Jackson on that pattern really didn't seem to have the burst that you, you like to see your wide receiver. Let's watch him here working against Vince Buck man-to-man. -man. Buck comes out, just tries to get a hand on him, but no. Now he decides to slide back. And Jackson waits in the hole. What he's trying to do is there's a zone there, so he's trying to wait into the hole uh, for the football to come, but uh, he can't wait that long. Neither quarterback has looked good today. Wade Wilson has had people in his face all game. And the Vinny Testaverde, you know, he's had more time, but he's not healthy. And that was ruled in, uh, an incomplete pass and no interception for this buck. He's trapped. Third down and eight. And the whistle blows, so there is no play. And we'll have a delay a game against the Browns. Five yards marched off on the second delay of game penalty against Cleveland. Here's a look at why that last play was not an interception by this Buck. Buck lays out. And it looks like he traps the ball, but I think that, I don't know, that's a close call. That's when it, uh, you know, it looked like he just uh, engulfed the football. Maybe Vince Buck had a pick there. Third down and 13 with 10.48 remaining in the fourth quarter. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up well. And the pass is caught. It was deflected and caught. Leroy Hort after it was kicked by Wayne Martin, who talk about guys having a great chance for an interception. Wayne Martin was right there, and if he picks it, he's gone. There's nothing between him uh, and the goal line but about 20 yards of green grass. So the Browns will have to kick it away. Very nearly yet another tunnel. Number 93 on defense. That's uh, Wayne Martin right there. Watch him tip the ball here. It goes right off the side of his helmet, and then it goes to Leroy Hoard. Kick by Hanson. And it will drop inside the 25-yard line. And so both sides are holding tight. And a penalty marker down back at the line of scrimmage. So he almost had two turnovers on that series alone. And the Browns have turned it over four times thus far in the game. You say, how can you go this long in the season? You go through that many practices and everything else and continue to make mistakes. Uh, continue to have penalties like this one on the special teams play. on the kicking team, number 56. Five yards, repeat fourth down. So they're going to kick it again. That was Mike Caldwell. <laughs> penalty, that was the ninth penalty on the Browns today. We have had the measly games. Offense this half, very little production on either time. Team. The Saints have gained 32 yards, Cleveland 114, but 55 of those came on Eric Metcalf's run. So Hanson 
Johnson again kicking. And Hughes again back. Zink trying to block this one. Great kick. How did it? Hughes back. Started on his 20-yard line and is wrestled out of bounds. And that was Stacey Hairston. So the New Orleans Saints will have their hands on the ball with just under 10 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Right on CBS. Saints ball on the 30-yard line. McAfee is the running back. And McAfee breaks a couple of tackles and picks up nearly five yards on the first down. Making the tackle for the Browns was Zagapola Kelly and Mike Caldwell. You know, I go back to uh, something I said earlier in the game and the use of Dalton Hilliard and whether or not, you know, you, you keep this, you know, jabbing him in there and uh, a couple of run plays here, you know, maybe toss the ball out to him on the perimeter, uh, get the ball in his hand a couple of times, though, Dick, because he seems to be the only flash that really this offense for the uh, Saints has shown today. Here goes Wilson, sacked again. That time Mike Johnson came up the middle. The Saints offensive front in the middle has not been able to keep the Browns out. That is their sixth sack of the ball game. The Saints, believe it or not, have none. Remember, the last series, they told you he came in unmolested. This time, he does the same thing, except he finds Wade Wilson with the football, and there's no better treat for a linebacker to find a quarterback all by himself. So now it'll be third down and long. Third and 14, and up gray hair on Jim Morris' head, for sure. Out of the shotgun goes Wilson, the dog pound at his back. Pressure again, and the pass caught by Eric Martin. Breaks a couple of tackles, and he's going to get the first down after all. What a brilliant piece of work by Eric Martin. Two Browns had him behind the sticker, the sticks, and Belichick is enraged over there. Eric Turner and Terry Taylor both missed tackles and a gain of 15 yards to Eric Martin. And good, strong running by Eric Martin, too, because he's a big, physical, wide receiver. You can't tackle him and just hope that you're going to drag him down. Uh, you got to wrap him up. Shoulders just won't get it. So it's a first down for the Saints with 8.15 remaining in the fourth. They're on their own 41-yard line. Play fake. Wilson sacked again. This time, James Jones. Four and a half sacks for James Jones this year and seven sacks today for the Cleveland Browns. They are doing a number on the Saints offensive line in Wade Wilson. And yes, James Jones is the same guy that you used to see in the backfield in short yardage situation. He makes this one a long yardage situation by getting a sack on Wade Wilson. And this Cleveland defensive front has really been getting after uh, the quarterback, Wade Wilson. 17-13, the Browns lead. It is second down and 16. They're going to tee off again. And Clay Matthews, I believe, was the first to get to Wade Wilson for sack number eight. And they ought to have a meeting over at the sideline and talk to that same offensive line because they are for it against the Browns today, eight sacks. A lot of different looks happening up front. This one, just Cooper just gets beat right now. The 71, the uh, left tackle just got beat right off the football. Clay Matthews, the guy doing the drumming. 16 years in the NFL. One of the, he's the oldest defensive player in the league. Matthews now with four sacks on the year. It'll be third and 25. Out of the shotgun. Quick release, nearly intercepted. Wade Wilson has no chance, no, no chance to get a pass off against the Cleveland Browns defensive rush. Eric Turner nearly picked it off. And, uh, you know, watch him. He's in the shotgun now, Dick. And it's almost like he's a better target back there. At least they can see him right now because there's no, uh, this rush is relentless. Anthony Pleasant doesn't even have to slow up to hit him. I don't remember seeing a relentless pass rush by so many people against a beleaguered offensive line as we're seeing against the Saints and Barnhart with a beauty. Nice high kick and Metcalf back on the 28-yard line. Gets a good block, tripped up and down he goes. There's a penalty marker down. Brad Muster might have tripped him up and let's see if he gets called for an illegal block. We'll wait. Or whether it's on the Browns. And it is against Cleveland. 
It is a holding penalty. The Bears, 30 to 17, pounding the Packers. Minnesota over Detroit, 13 and 6, and fourth. And Todd Philcox is going back out there, so Bill Belichick has seen what we have seen, and that is the fact that Vinny Testaverde is forcing the throw, pushing. Yeah. The arm was tightening up on him a little bit. He's kind of chucking it into the ground, and you knew that he'd give you what he had. It was good enough to get it to this point where they're leading. 17-13 in the fourth. 7.06 remaining. So now it's Bill Cox's job to use the clock and perhaps add some more points. The Saints need a touchdown to pull this game out. Third down on the 21. On the big draw play, Bill Cox's pass is incomplete. He was going for Mark Carrier. That'll bring up second down. Crowd not at all pleased with that effort by Bill Cox, who threw a interception right in the hands of Ronaldo Turnbull early in the second quarter before Bill Belichick pulled him for death to Bernie. You know, Bill Belichick has a reputation of being kind of stoic, and, you know, his sideline to me is certainly uh, is just that. But as uh, we talked with him uh, yesterday, Dick, it kind of loosened up a little bit, and he's telling us, hey, look, you know, it's, it's, you make a decision, if you don't let somebody go with his pocket with Bernie Kosar, you know, you know, you're not going to be the most popular guy in town. But I guess the thing that you always have to look at is, is the fact that, you know, it's your decision to make, it's your football, but it's responsibility. That's not the way. It's fun. It was intended for Rico Smith. I think the biggest question about all of this story involving Kozar is we take a look at the fine play again by Vince Buck, and he's been all over the team. He's had the day they really have. The fact is that when Bernie Kozar was released, Vinny Testaverde was hurt, right? Todd Philcox was the best he had. Mm -hmm. So the question is, was Todd Philcox a better bet than Bernie Kozar? Well, and they said, well, you know, Bernie Kozar did not want to be a backup quarterback here. He could not handle it. But, but even still, he's still on his way. He's had a hurt. You know, uh, you have to make those decisions, and you have to look at Third down and ten, and the pass off the hands of Leroy Hoare. And it was, again, Keith Taylor with a safety blitz. And that'll be fourth down coming up, and the Browns will have to kick it away. Bill Cox, 6 of 14 now for 83 yards. He has one interception and has thrown a touchdown pass. And they really didn't burn any time off the clock. You're giving the ball right back to the Saints. And I want the same exact position. Got to be a, a bit surprised. Yeah. Considering the Saints need a touchdown. Not a field goal. Hanson's kick and a fair catch called for by Hughes. And the Saints will have good field position. But I wonder if that offensive line has had a talking to over on the sidelines because they have really not for yards per play. That just won't get it done. 42-yard line, first down for Wade Wilson. And the handoff is to Dawson Hilliard. Hilliard close to midfield. Eric Turner on the tackle after a gain of six. The important thing here is uh, if you're on that Saints sideline, you want to be patient. You got over six minutes to go in the ball game. Have a nice strong drive and, and got Dalton Hilliard in the ball game uh, offensively. You know, you have to like that in terms of what he's done today. He's having his most productive day of the season, Dan. Dalton Hilliard. Don't forget Derek Brown, unable to play because of the sprained ankle, the leading rusher. Second leading rusher on the Saints, believe it or not, is Wade Wilson. Second down and four. Quick pass to Eric Martin. Forward progress will give him the first down in the Browns territory. Stevon Moore grabbed hold of him immediately. I want to remind you that this game is presented by authority of the National Football League, and the CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of CBS, the Cleveland Browns, and the National Football League is prohibited. First and ten for the Saints on the Browns, 47. Hilliard has gained 51 yards on the ground today. Wade Wilson trying to escape pressure. Not this time, and another sack. Anthony Pleasant with his second sack of the game, and that's nine for the Cleveland Browns. That was a gnarly finger sack, and that's when you get your fingers broken up. 
But uh, Anthony Pudgeon does an excellent job of not only shutting down uh, an opportunity for Wade Wilson to pass the football as he tries to come out to his side, escapes from Cooper, and watch here just grabs him and just rodeos him down to the ground. Loss of five yards on the play, and the Saints are back in their own territory. Nine sacks and all that kind of pressure. Seven different Browns have collected sacks today. Second and 15, a handoff to Hilliard, stopped in his tracks, and a loss on the play. That was Michael Dean Perry. If, if you want to know how he's escaping on the line of scrimmage, watch his arm over technique. He said, well, what do I mean by arm over? Watch him here, number 92, right in the middle of your screen. You see that arm come up over the top? And what that does is as you try to block him, well, he's not where you thought he was. Suddenly he's on your running back. Loss of four yards. Third down and 19. Less than four and a half minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. The Browns in front, 17 to 13. Wilson pass, drop. Torrance Small couldn't hold on to it, and that'll bring up fourth down. They needed a mile and a half for the first down. They would have been well short anyway. Jerry Taylor was defending. And the crowd saluting the Browns' defensive effort. From the owner on down, Art Modell and his son David. Tommy Barnhart will kick it away. And back to Mark Carrier for the Browns. There's Carrier. Good high kick. Carrier on the run and out of bounds. Vikings beat the Lions 13 to nothing. First down for the Browns on their 26. Leroy Hoard goes up the middle and gets good yardage on first down. Robert Goff making the tackle and a gain of six. Now the clock becomes a factor and uh, the Browns will probably keep the ball on the ground. Surprising they didn't do it the last time they had the ball. Saints have all three of their timeouts remaining. You're more looking for something that's, you know, you know just that one little thing that's going to get you a win here at the end. You know, the last week the game came down to the final play, and he's probably open now. At least they'll have an opportunity here at the end to go ahead and win this game. Second down and four. Wilson goes in motion for Cleveland. And here is Ward again. It will be third down and short as he is stopped by Keith Taylor and Sam Mills. Two hard pickup. Winding down to three minutes to go. Ford has gained 43 yards on 12 carries, under three minutes to go. Wolfley goes out of the game, and Eric Metcalf checks back in. to one second, and here is Philcox on the run, he's got Kinch in the tight end, first down for the Browns, a big one, big first down for Cleveland, as the clock continues to run, less than two and a half to play, Taylor on the start, and that is where the Saints so desperately needed a defensive stop, Philcox delivered, a losing streak, they are 226 away from doing that, ball at the 42 yard line of the Cleveland, Leroy Hoard carries and picks up nearly seven yards. Ricky Jackson makes the tackle, and the Saints will call another timeout, leaving them with one. They will also get and the Browns on their own 49-yard line. His second effort was good enough. Just kept pushing the kick drive and lost his helmet, but gained the first down. And we're going to wind down at the two-minute warning. The Saints still have one timeout left. And listen to the crowd at the two-minute warning. That is not enough. 
No, that's a big part of the story, and also the nine sacks by the Browns against Wade Wilson. First down on the 46, Bardell dives forward for four yards, and the Saints are going to use their last timeout now. Tommy walking around with a little Cleveland real estate on his helmet. On the 43 of the Saints. No surprise coming up here. It'll be a running play. New Orleans is out of timeout. Leroy Horde. 149 to go. A no gain on the play. Nothing the Saints can do now to stop the clock. For the Browns, a big win. They said, admitted, a must win. And if they hold on in the last minute and a half, they will now draw even at 6-6 six and six on the year, which puts them... Uh, in solid footing for a wild card berth when you consider the alternative. There was a guy that came to the rescue today that came in and played out, say, the middle portion of the ball game for Cleveland, then finished Justin Verde and did a nice job at the quarterback position. Bill Cox wrapping up now. Third down and seven, Hora turning the corner. And let's see where they mark it. His helmet has come off again, and he is shy of the first down by about a yard. Toy Cook on the tackle. They always tell you to strap it up. You better strap it up. <laughs> Change those good looks. <laughs> It'll be fourth down and one. And the Browns are going to run the play. With 44 seconds to go, Bill Cox check with Bill Belichick. They will run the play. And then on the changeover, the clock will stop. And really, when you look at the you know, football where it sits on the field as opposed to where the sticks are, it's actually about, it looks like about a yard and a half that they need for the first. And now the Browns deciding what play they want to run for the timeout. They have one left. Saints are out of timeouts. Now Hanson goes over to the sidelines. Now you've got to make a decision. Because if you don't make the first down, the clock will stop. And it's a shorter field for the Saints. But if you kick the ball out of bounds, they got a long way to go in any event. But you got the 26 seconds remaining on the clock. They don't have any timeouts. They've got to complete a couple of passes at least to get down. And even with Morton Anderson, you know, you got to get down about 30 yards. Well, they need uh, a touchdown. 35 yards. And they need a touchdown anyway to win the thing. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you can go ahead and take that chance. Or just run it away like they're going to do here. Hanson will kick. And Hills is back. And you can be sure that Hanson will do anything but kick it in the air to Tyrone Hughes. He'll kick it left, he'll kick it right, but he won't kick it down the middle. <laughs> well, he kicks it down the middle. In fact, that's called for by uh, Hughes at the nine yard line. They've got 20 seconds remaining to see. And they have to throw 89 yards. The Saints, though, have gained total offense only 30 yards in the second half today. And a lot of that's due to the fact that you know, they've given up nine sacks on the day and, and uh, just have not run the football effectively outside of the, the Hilliard effort. Uh, you really haven't seen any of the ball come out of the backfield in the uh, in his great way. You pointed out they had their chances with the one that's over. Yep, it's a good field position on this one. Uh, two field goals is all they have. First down on the nine. So they got to go 91 yards. Wade Wilson throws underneath to Quinn Early. Now Tarn Small. This is a Stanford Cow game without the band, and he is stopped at the one yard line by Michael Dean Perry. What a wild wind up to this game and the game is over and the band is in the dog sound <laughs> sure is the browns have won ending a four game losing streak and get even at six and six on the year being new orleans Saints. so bill belichick under fire for his decisions the browns win a game they have to win and for the new orleans saints they're now in a big Cauldron of teams fighting for wild card votes, losing by final score of 17-13. And again, you go back to a team that...